What's up guys, we've got a lot going on right now. Thanks for joining me. If you wanna make a reflex deflex bow, this video may be very helpful to you. This is the last video in a tailoring course, whole series of multiple videos you can check below for the playlist. And I've got some sweet things coming very soon. So sit back, relax, enjoy this long video if you wanna make a bow. If not, I'm coming to you here real soon with what I think you'll like. So stay shatterproof. See you guys around. It doesn't get much more exciting than this. We're gonna start tailoring this bow. Now this specific one has bamboo on the back with Ipe on the belly, but any reflex deflex bow design, whether it be fiberglass, whether it be this, whether it be just an Osage bow, whether it be any materials, the same concepts are gonna work for tailoring. So on the whiteboard behind me, I've got some goals and a plan. Let's go into it. So I'm gonna walk you through kind of my exact process of tillering and kind of how I go about it. Uh, the first thing here is we've got our goal. We've got a 40 pound bow is what we're gonna shoot for at a 28 inch draw. I'm gonna look for a one eight inch positive tiller and that's gonna be the starting point and then in the end when we shoot it, if that needs adjusted for smoothness of shooting, we will. And then finally, we've got speed. I'm focusing on speed on this bow. We've got thinner limbs. We got a really, really hard wood in the Ipe. This type of bow, I like to focus on speed, and that's how this one's designed. And then over here, I've got Tillering Revolutions. This is just for you guys so you can see how long it takes me. So the first section is gonna be floor tillering to six inches of bending. So this is from not bending at all to starting to bend. And every time I remove wood, um, and then go to the tilling tree will be one revolution. From there we've got six inches till the bow is strung and so I'm just gonna mark this here. I won't show every single time I'm removing wood but I will show you the tiller each time and then we'll keep track so you can see kind of an idea of how many times it takes. So it may be 20, 30, 40, 50, I don't know. We'll see how many times it takes to get to the next step. And then from the bow being strung up, till we're at two inches left on our bow. So those are the three steps, so you can kind of see which one takes the most time and which one takes the most revolutions of wood removal so that you can use those numbers and be cautious yourself to know how close maybe you are. This reflex deflex bow, I'm gonna tiller on the tillering tree and then on the D bow, I'm going to do that on the tillering stick. So you can see how I would do both of those. But the first thing to do is to set this up there and make sure the bow is level. I've got this block behind here. Got a little play for different sizes of bows. So I should be able to, there we go. And that's tight, so it'll be, it'll be pushed this way so the limbs won't be running along the wall. I'm gonna step back and take a look at this bow. And this, this side over here is a little bit lower. We need that up right there. So we need to add a little wedge on this left side. So you could use a little piece of wood like this. I'm gonna use some tape so that I can stick it down and then it won't move for the whole time. This is one of those things you may not think about doing in the beginning, but if you do it, your results will be much better. The other option there is I could have thrown this on the belt sander and sanded this end down, or it would have been this end down and it would have sat better, but a tape is a little quicker. There we go, we are looking even. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at this line. I know my wall is level, and so I can look at that line and match it up on both ends where it's resting, because that's the reflex. Um, and then from there, now when I draw it down, it'll be easier to tell which limb needs to be removed. But if it were off, it's gonna be a lot harder to see visually which limb needs to be removed because you're not drawing it down, you'd be drawing it that way basically. So step one, get it level. I'm gonna center the bow and then I'll draw it directly in the middle for now until the bow's strong. And then once the bow's strong, I can establish the top limb or the bottom limb. If your bow layout allows you to do that, I like to do that more now because even on a board bow, the, the string could lay off to one side and that's the side I'm gonna want the arrow rest on. If you have a specific layout where you've already established the top limb, what I like to do is always put the top limb on the right, 
on everything I do. That way it's consistent and I know which one's the top and which one's the bottom. That's really important, especially when you're getting to the end of tillering and uh, adding in your positive tiller. So for me, I just move my pulley around in order to get it in the right location. Okay, so just like that, I got the pulley directly in the center. And then once I get the brace height established the top limb, I'll move it back over to the right because that's where my fingers will uh, lay on the bow. So right now, we're hardly bending at all. So this is where I'm gonna take this to the belt sander and I'm gonna hog off some wood. What I will do is I'll find the thinnest part on the limb, which I think is right here from looking on it, and then I will mark a line on either side at that thickness, and then go remove down to that line on the belt sander so that I can get enough wood down that it'll start bending, but I can still have guidance lines and I can check with the caliper so that I don't go uh, too quickly. But this is a time I like to use the belt sander to hog off a decent amount of wood. So I get thinner as I come in. One thing, if you are measuring, just remember there are nodes, and if you measure right on the node, it's gonna, you're gonna be like, oh, that's super thick. Um, but I would just move off of the node about a half inch to an inch to get an accurate reading. One of the benefits I have is I've built a lot of these bows before. Here's a finished one. So if you've ever built a bow before, I always encourage people to measure it. And so I'm like five and a half. Uh, 550 thou, I guess, is how you'd say it, of an, in, of an inch. Um, so basically we're half an inch, slightly over half an inch, and then it tapers down to below half an inch since the limb is tapered. But what I can do is I can mark this bow and make sure my lines are bigger than half an inch because I need to give myself play when I'm uh, using the scraper. But that gives me a reference to know how low to go. And honestly, that's pretty consistent throughout um, other bows. So here's a 40 pound oak bow and we're at 660 thou. So um, we're five eighths of an inch ish. And so this one's a little bit bigger. Um, generally the weaker material, the larger or thicker the wood needs to be. Um, but it also depends on your width. But most bows are three eighths of an inch to five eighths of an inch thick. If you're in between a 30 and a 60 pound bow. So you can just keep that in mind just as a reference depending upon the bow you're making. All right, now let's hit this up on the belt sander and hog off some material so that we can uh, start bending it. Okay, I removed it all on the belt sander. I cleaned it up here with a scraper. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the scale on and start now. So I'm gonna pull it down to 40 pounds and see how far we bend. So 40's right there and I don't ever wanna draw past 40. So we stop there and we clearly see we're bending three inches, maybe two inches. So we still got a lot of wood to remove. I need to do what I just did another time. One of the benefits to doing the floor tiller is that it's really quick to see if you need to remove more wood, which we definitely do on both of these limbs.
So before I check the bend on this bell, I'm going to exercise the limbs here for a couple minutes. And I'll warm it up. Okay, we're making really good progress. I removed quite a bit more wood with the belt sander and then um, we're bending about four inches now from its resting state. The limbs are bending down four inches. And now we're gonna head over to the scraper. We're able to see enough bend now that we can start exercising the limbs. You wanna do this as soon as possible, so I'm just pulling it down to 40 pounds and I know the limbs are only going down four inches, but um, as soon as possible you want it to start remembering the new memory because you have removed wood. The primary goal right now is to keep the bottom and the top limb bending at the same distance and an even amount of stress throughout the limbs. We want that tiller to be as even as possible as soon as possible so that if we have a draw length of 12 inches or 14 inches but our tiller's even, then we just have to evenly remove wood off both sides and it makes the second half of tillering go much quicker rather than having to correct and overcorrect back and forth. So the goal right now is to measure often with calipers for me, to look at it on the tillering tree, to check for limb twist, and to make sure we're keeping it as even as possible. With a reflex deflex bow, we want the stress to be distributed evenly throughout the limb, the same as we would with a D-bow. The difference is the shape of the bend is gonna be different. On a D-bow, we could throw those circles up there, and you can see the arc in the limb is even, and that's because it's a flat bow, and then we're bending it, and so it's even. But a reflex deflex bow, it's bending backwards the other way, and then part of it's bending down, because it's got a reflex and a deflex in it. So, as that limb is curved, what? yeah, as that limb is curved there, we want it to bend evenly from this setting point. Because if we made it curve like we would a D-bow, this part right here in the middle, right, this part right here in the middle would have like no wood left and it would break in the middle there. So it's gonna look, it's kind of gonna follow this shape, if that makes sense, for, for it to bend. And as we move along, you'll be able to see the shape that I'm looking for. It's kind of a trained uh, by the eye look, but, the benefit to a reflex deflex bow is that if you pull it off, it's a very smooth shooting bow. It's a fun challenge on the tillering because it is different. And a key to keep you on track is to follow the thickness of the wood. And you want a slight taper from the handle down to the limb tips. And I know it's not much bend yet, but it's actually looking really good. So I'm looking at both limbs, seeing if the left and the right are bending pretty equal, which they are. And then secondly, I'm looking for action, the same amount of action throughout the limb. So this should bend as much as this. This, since it's curved back up, will still look a little weird because it's not gonna be, the tip's not gonna be all the way down. So mentally, you can separate the limb into three parts. You've got from here to here. So it's a pretty straight section. And so I can focus right there and see how that's bending. And then from here to here, which is going to be a very curved area. So that's, that's the difficult part. And then we've got from here to the limb tip and so on. And so we've got about one, two, three sections. And those three sections, you wanna train your eye to look at individually and that'll allow you to determine if that section's bending. If you try to look at the full limb at once, it can be kind of confusing, but I can check this first eight inches and then look at the opposite side for the first eight inches and see if there's action. Look for action in that area. If there is not action, then that's probably the area you want to remove. Same thing here. We wanna look for action in the middle. The middle could have the most action, but since there's a lot of curve right there, it could look like when you pull it down, there's no action. So that's why you kind of really need to mentally separate the different parts of the limb. And because it's a reflex deflex, the gizmo is gonna be pretty much useless because it's just gonna mark this middle section the whole time because we, we've got the curve in the bow already. So this isn't the tool for the job. We're definitely gonna use our eyes and I'm gonna go ahead and use a Sharpie. I'm gonna look for action in comparison on both limbs and mark where I think we need to remove wood the most. 
So I'll pull it down and hold it at that 40 pounds for about three to five seconds. That way I have enough time to look around. And from what I'm seeing, there's a decent amount of action here, but on this side, it doesn't match it. So let's move into that middle section. And the same thing with the middle section. There's a decent amount of action here, but over here, we need more. And then near the handles, they look about the same. So from here, I know where to remove wood. A slight bit more off this outer edge on that limb, and then since the limbs are bending equally, we're still gonna remove wood off of both sides and we're gonna make that equal. But this limb, since it's bending more equally than that one, I can just remove wood equally over the whole limb. On this limb, I need to remove more on the outside because it's not bending as much there. So before I check the bend on this bell, I'm gonna exercise the limbs here for a couple minutes and I'll warm it up. And I'll pull it to 40 pounds and hold it for a second or two. And repeat. I've kept the corners of the bow square so I haven't rounded them over. And I primarily do that because that makes it easier to take readings with calipers to, to look for a limb twist. So once we do this, and see where we want to remove wood. We'll go put it in the vise and check for a limb twist real quick. That way we can proactively take care of that if anything looks like it'll happen. Or before anything looks like it'll happen. We've got a really, really good start. Again, you kind of got to make this your own. So I like to use these calipers to check the limb twist, but you don't need calipers. You can absolutely pull the tape measure out, line up the bottom line of one of the inches and see how close you are. And it's, it's close enough that you can make a very, very good bow that way. But this side is a little bit thicker. So I'll mark the side that's thicker and then go ahead and take that off first to make these two sides even. And then technically the two ways to do this is if you can see how far off you are with one of your shavings, you can actually measure it with a caliper, calipers and get your reading. And then from there, you can know how many scrapes you'll approximately need to get that much wood off. If you like going technical, you can do that. And so for me, it's um, about four thousandths of it, four thou basically, so, or five thou. And so I can know that if I need to get, let's say, uh, one tenth of an inch off or a hundred thou, I need to do 20 scrapes to get that off. That is technical, but if you like that sort of thing, um, it can be helpful to be precise. And if you're not interested in going technical like that, don't at all. Just mark with a Sharpie, do some scraping and test and just look and, you know, go intuitive as you want. There's not one method that's better than the other. It comes down to attention to detail and practice. Uh, and the method that each individual likes to do. Um, I kind of find myself in the middle. I mix both, or I mix a bunch of different methods together. Um, Cause for me, if the math checks out, if with my eyes it checks out, um, the more things I can check the tiller to, the better result I have, and the quicker I generally find a problem. Okay, I think we should be getting close to 40 pounds at six inches. I'll exercise it a bit first and then we'll take a look. We still got a lot of wood to remove to get to six inches. We are just about three and a half, four inches on the pole. So let's, uh, let's go again. All right, so I took more wood off. I'm still being fairly aggressive 
And now we are pulling uh, five inches at 40 pounds. So we're in that 46 inch mark. And all that's gonna tell me is to switch my brain a little bit to start being just a little bit more careful and what that is is just to remove less wood for the next time I check. That way it's uh, easier to have control. I'm pulling it about five inches. When I get to pulling it about 10 inches is when I will string the bow up, 10 inches at 40 pounds. So we've got five more inches to go before we can get it to brace height. I'm gonna continue as we've been doing and I'll show you the tiller each time I come from removing wood and then I'll catch back up with you when we're at brace height. And I forgot to tell you, this is where we really start using a Sharpie to mark evenly where we're gonna remove wood, take the Sharpie line off and then come back. I've been doing, I've been marking with a Sharpie, but once the Sharpie line's gone, I've been continuing to remove a decent amount of wood. So we're dropping that down to just removing the Sharpie, which is gonna be about 10 strokes with a scraper. I put a tighter string on it. What you can see when the string's running straight, it's not directly down the center, it's running further to the left. So I'm gonna make that my side where I'm gonna have the arrow rest, uh, dubbing this the top limb. So on the bow, I'm gonna give myself a T on the top limb and I'm always gonna have that to the right. One of the really good things about putting a string on it is yes, you can figure out your top limb if you haven't yet. Um, but secondly, you can line the hook up with where you shoot the bow. So you can move it back over to the right if you need to. But I did have to flip those sides. So I'm gonna take the tape off and I need to re-level it for it being flipped so that it's not off. Right now you can tell it's quite off. It makes it look like the right limb's bending much, much more. Okay, I just got a string on the bow for the first time. And you'll see that the bend is different now than it was before the string's on. And that's because with the, the string on now, it's pulling this in more, where with a loose tilting string, we're pulling down more. So it does change the angle a little bit, and that's why you wanna get a string on it as soon as possible. All right, this is where we're at so far. The first step took me five times to go back and forth between removing wood and exercising the limbs. Um, and then after it was bending about six inches to get it strung up, it took me 10 times of removing wood. And so now we're starting here. We'll see how long it takes to get to the finished bow. And by the way, this has taken me like two hours so far. Okay, what's really interesting right here is how much of that reflex snapped out of this bow when I got it to brace height. I wasn't expecting that, but that's looking more like a G bow compared to this one. So that, that means this middle area is stronger on this one. All right, so here's the deal. I was trying to figure out what to do because I screwed up a little bit. And I'm just gonna show you how I would work my way out of this problem in case it ever happens to you. So basically, <laughs> I'm teaching a course on how to make a bow and what not to do. And so, um, but it's taking a long time because I'm filming. And so I tried to skip a few steps and jump the process. In other words, I was just scraping too much wood at a time and I got it bending too far before I put the string on it. And that's why when the string went on, I was like, what, what's going on? And it's like, oh yeah, you went too fast. So hopefully you have the self-control not to do what I just did, but here the bow is, and the top limb is bending more than the bottom limb. So we've got to uh, just work on the bottom limb. First step is to make the both limbs bend evenly. Right now, if I take the tape measure, we've got seven, and seven eighths, and we got seven and a half on the bottom. We want that closer to an eighth inch difference instead of a half inch difference. So we need to remove and exercise these limbs, but especially off the bottom one first. So let's do that. So my biggest concern isn't if I can get this tillered looking good shooting well. 
The biggest concern is if I can do that before we hit 40 pounds at 28 inches. Sometimes if you remove too much wood like I did here, you'll get to that 28 inches and you won't be a good tiller and you'll already be at 40 pounds. And so you'll want to remove more wood, that way it doesn't create a problem over time, but you're gonna end with a lighter poundage bow. So that's what we're fighting against now. Because the limbs are so imbalanced, I'm not gonna overdraw it. So I'm only drawing to 30 pounds right now and because that right limb's just bending too much compared to the left. And I'm just gonna exercise it at 30 pounds for this round and go remove some more wood before I pull it back to 40 pounds again. Now the nice thing once you have a string on it is you don't have to take the string off to remove wood. I'll show you how. There's two ways I use this scraper. The first way is just normal like this, which is totally fine. You just don't wanna nick your string. So another way is you can turn it this way, and that's why I'm wearing gloves, because you get this sharp angle and it can, you can poke yourself with a scraper. But, at that angle, you can also scrape and then you avoid ever nicking your string. It's a safe and it's actually a really easy way to remove wood. See, I gotta quit thinking about the film and I gotta focus on this bow for a second. Breaking all my own rules. They're my rules to make a good bow. You don't have to follow them. It just helps. As we get further along, I'll hit the corners with some sandpaper just to take that edge off and make it nice and smooth. I like to just do a few quick pumps to get the limbs moving again. That's starting to even out. I'm not sure if you can tell, but we're getting closer here. I'm just grabbing a string from my reject pile, basically, but what I would normally do is just shorten that tillering string and keep using your tillering string until the bow's done, and then measure that tillering string and either make or buy a string that is that length of the tillering string. But since I have so many leftover and old strings, um, I always have one that's the right length. <laughs> okay, this is kind of interesting because this is real time. like what's going on here. So, what is also very interesting about this bow, um, there's two more things that I've went into play. One, is that the original reflex in this bow was very minimal. I'll probably throw up a little bit of video here, a little shot of the beginning bow, but it's very, very minimal. Causing this to end up to tiller more like a D bow than I expected. The second thing is, um, this is a wood bow and I've been, tillering a lot of fiberglass bows recently, and the fiberglass doesn't set as much. It doesn't have string follow as much. So with that being said, this one's gonna be a finished different shape than this fiberglass bow. Even though they're both reflex deflex bows, this one is much, much more extreme. As you can see, it's held that curvature, and I've, I've left this bow strung for over three months as a torture test, and I just shoot it often just to, just to test it out. Um, this one right here that we're making right now, you can see it's much more like a Debo than this one because it's lost some of that reflex. I'm gonna um, unstring this and I'll show you how little it's reflexed. So there is the unstrung bow. There's a little bit in there, but I mean, it's less than an inch going either direction. So it's almost unfair to call this a reflex deflex bow. So I'm gonna have to do an extreme version of a reflex deflex bow later on, but I wanna keep this in the course just so you can see kind of the process and how I've run into problems, but I'm still gonna try to make a really good bow with this one. So um, I don't wanna overcomplicate tillering. And as I go more in depth, if something's confusing, if I say something, that makes you feel like it's so complicated you don't want to start, forget everything I say and just start.
Okay, got the string on it now. We got a really good brace height actually. I even, have, I even marked the string with duct tape so I know where to put the hook each time. So check out this bend with me. Okay, so right uh, there's 20 pounds, that 15 inch draw. 30 pounds at a 19 inch draw. Go to 30 a couple times. Okay, we're gonna go to 35. 35 pounds at the 21 inch draw. That upper limb is bending great. The left limb needs a little bit off the middle. And then right down to 40 pounds. Pause the tiller slightly. Okay. All right, so we're back on track. I've got a positive tiller by 1 8 of an inch. Still need to remove a little bit more wood here on the top. It's a 40 pound pull right now at a 24 inch draw, I think it was. So we've got four more, four to five more inches to draw. So only using a pencil now, gonna continue to remove wood, make very small changes, cause we are so close to this being done. Okay, so this is 40 pounds now, right there at 20, uh, 23 inch draw. I'm gonna give this a break before I finish it out, cause um, I've been up a long time and I know I'm prone to make another mistake easily if I don't give it a break. So often what I like to do is just leave the bow strung sitting right there. That's going to have the bow under stress and um, I'll leave it for 30 minutes or so and if it has not set into its final position that'll definitely help it do so beyond exercising the limbs. Okay, it's been a day or two and I've got some fresh eyes to look at this. So this is the reflex deflex bow here on the right we're working on. And here's a finished reflex deflex bow on the left. And you can see that they're much different in their bend, which will change the tiller just a little bit. So this is how tillering goes <laughs> very often. You think you're doing one thing and then you, know, you realize you need to change. So the difference between this tiller and a Debo is going to be the very middle of the limbs just aren't gonna bend quite as much. So if we have an e even tiller throughout, this section right here in the middle of the limb shouldn't bend quite as much as it would on a Debo. So it's gonna maybe look like the right and the left are bending slightly more. In other words, if you used a tiller in gizmo, it's gonna mark the middle and not the sides, but that's okay because what we talked about earlier, you want the same action throughout the limb, that way it's distributing the stress evenly. With this slight deflex down here before it comes up on the reflex, we need this middle area just to bend a little bit less when you're pulling it. That's what it's gonna look like it's bending less when actually, since it is coming up, it's bending the same. So it's just gonna be slightly different. And this is how deflexed bows work. So deflex coming down from the handle, that's the deflex, the reflex is coming back up here. The reflex is quite easy to tiller because it's at the end of the tip and you don't, you just don't use it near as much. Um, it's, 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 it's easier to tiller, but the middle's where it's a little bit confusing. But you can see from this bow to the fiberglass bow I was showing you an example of that I made, you could have a reflex deflex bow anywhere on that gradient or even further and that's gonna change how much it's bending there in the middle. So enough talking, let's get back to tillering. We're getting real close here. I need to start fine tuning this and getting the tiller uh, nailed in. So I've got this marked with a pencil where I'm gonna remove wood. And I just wanna show you how little of wood you need to remove to make a difference. We're at 24 inches, so we only need two more inches before we're gonna call it done and do the final sanding and shape the handle. So when I mark the part that I wanna remove with a pencil, you probably can't see it, but it is from here to here. When I'm removing wood, and right there, that's literally it, four to five scrapes, and then just grab some sandpaper. Smooth it out, and that'll change the tiller. 
at the end. The closer to the end you get, that's why we go less aggressive, is because there's so much, uh, there's such a little wood left, it changes the tiller really quickly. So I'll go ahead and pull the 35 pounds, get it moving, and then we'll go down to 40. So that's at uh, 24 inches still. And now let's go to 40, 25 times. All right, there's 25 times for us. So I'll go again, pull it to 40. The limbs are bending really good relative to each other, still that slight positive tiller. So just gonna remove a little bit of wood off both sides, that way we can continue with that positive tiller. Okay, so we're at 26 inches, made super good progress. Looks great on the computer. I like to do that near the end to double check. My eyes aren't deceiving me. Everything's looking good, so now it's time to shape the handle. Once we get the handle shaped, we can shoot it, and if we like how we shoot it, we'll be able to do final sanding, sign it off, and have a great bow. I like to cut my arrow rest on a curve, that way the arrow only touches right here at the very top. So I just cut it with a hacksaw blade, any fine tooth, any wood saw with fine teeth is great. So I'll just cut down the arrow rest and then I'll chisel out this side for a little sight window right here. Um, I went to the center, came up an inch and a quarter and that's where I do the arrow rest. <laughs> Okay, we got the handle shape good enough to shoot it. And the method I like to use is to check it on the tillering tree and if it looks perfectly fine to me, then I can shoot the bow and if it feels fine, call it done. Do final sanding and final shaping of the handle and you're done. But if it doesn't feel great when you shoot it, recheck the tiller, exercise the limbs, give it a little bit of time and you might find the problem on why it's not shooting good but I always like to shoot the bow before I officially call it done. Okay, I shot the bow a few times and it's actually feeling really good. So the way I like to finish it is just go to 120 grit sandpaper and then move up from there to 340 or whatever you wanna do and get it as smooth as you like it. And the bow is finished once you get the handle shaped like you like it. But that's all the tillering right there. The rest of it's just making it look pretty but it's a functional good bow right now. So I did a total of 26 revolutions. So, so we did five from floor tailoring to six inches of bending, so barely bending at all. And then it took us 10 more revolutions to get to a strung bow. And then lastly, we did 11 up on the finish. Now, that could be double for you on your first bow. I guarantee I did at least 50 the first time, but I did 26 here, and I'm gonna show you real quick every single one from start to finish so that you can see how the tiller changed over time. Check it out. There you have it, that's the 
method, those are the methods, so to speak, that I use when tillering. If you have any questions about the reflex deflex bow, let me know and I will make a video for you or I'll answer you in a voice message or a text. So just ask or comment below and we'll get your question answered. Thanks so much for watching and with that, I'll see you guys around.